get the most productivity out of yourself as a software engineer from a fame software engineer. If you don't know me, my name is Rami. I've worked for companies like Google as an intern, Twitch as a software engineer. Um, I, I've been all over the place. I've gotten my master's degree from Cornell Computer Science. I've gotten my bachelor's in computer science from Fisk University Black Ivy League. But today I will be giving you five tips in order to maximize your productivity as a software engineer. And number one, the most controversial, clean your room. I know some people don't want to hear that. Even me, if you talked to me 10 years ago, I was a very disorganized person. I worked hard. I did everything. I was the one who studied all the time, all night and received bad grades. And some of this is due to me not being able to compartmentalize information in a fast, swift way. When, once I became a software engineer and I've been able to work with valedictorians, I've been able to work with people from Harvard, I understand that the more organized you are, the faster you can go the more you can get done in less time. And so this is so underrated. Like I use a Jira board just for this channel, just to track to see, am I getting the things done? Am I capturing the information so that I don't have to think about it later? This is extremely important and it's a hard skill to teach. I have personally learned this through failing, just failing all the time and just being mad at myself. Like I never want this to happen again. It's important to be able to move fast. It's important to be able to organize things. And lastly, as a software engineer, you need to be able to define ambiguity or work on ambiguous process um, problems so that you can define how are we going to tackle. As you become more senior, as you go after the bigger, the bigger bags, right? <laughs> They want you to work on problems that sometimes they don't know the answer to. Nobody on the planet has ever come up with an answer before. And that starts with your ability to be organized. And so underrated, clean your room, be organized. That's my number one tip. So number two, practice interviewing every three months. To be honest with you, I think this is another controversial topic because I would say interviewing, the process of interviewing, doing lead code, doing these things, is almost useless towards my day-to-day -day job. It is almost useless. And I don't necessarily believe that just because somebody is really good at these interviewing questions does not necessarily mean that this guy is gonna be really good as a software engineer, but it's something that we have to bite the bullet on. We are defined by our ability to write, uh, write code in the way that we can prove ourselves is through the, these leak code problems. And so oftentimes Google, other companies, they will see, um, they will have great candidates that they believe and they know can do the job at a high level, but these guys cannot do these leak code can questions. And so, it automatically, it sucks, it really does. I would recommend um, using tools like Pramp, which is more face-to-face -face with another software engineer who's trying to learn like you. And it can be a great way to um, build your network up. Pramp is this website where you can, you give somebody a interviewing question and then they give you a question. It's a fair exchange for your time and it can be a good way to practice how an interviewer thinks. And also if you have money to invest, I would do interviewing IO. You can pay to get practice interviews with people at the companies you, are, you want to work for, like Netflix, like Google. Um, I haven't checked in a while, but these I'm sure they have a ton more options and I would highly recommend it. I know some of you don't want to invest in your, uh, in your education and that should be a tip. That should be something that I can make an entirely new video out of. Invest in your education. I've been to Cornell, right? Like I, 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 man, like if you guys knew how much debt I'm in, how much money I spend on my YouTube channel, how much money I spent just to learn. 
uh, how much money I spend just to be a better programmer. You guys would be appalled. I definitely spend over uh, 10 grand in education for myself. So of course, some of you don't have that, but software engineering, especially when you get to the higher levels and you make the, the money, the most money possible, it's definitely worth that investment. And so number three, I would say one of the most underrated things I've ever done in my career is get a mentor. Now, some of you are going to say, how do I get a mentor? How do I get somebody to want to help me? And I'll give you an example of this. When I was in school, I helped my teacher. He worked for Google, right? He was teaching the class. I was a TA for him and I did it for free because I worked with him and I gave him something constantly week after week delivering value. This guy helped me with mock interviews. And so that's what you want. That's how you make a mentorship with somebody that you like. It can start with you simply just giving. I think Gary Vaynerchuk has a book. It's called Hook Hook Jab. It's like you start, you give, you give, and you give, and then finally you take. Many of you, many of you, excuse me, I have the word. Many of you come up to me and you have this attitude, not attitude. You want something from me, right? You want my time. You want me to maybe look at your design. You want me to help out with your business. You want me to do X. I don't have time. And that's uh, especially like, could you imagine me doing that for 20 different people? So how can you, you know, I'm not, you guys don't have to give me anything. I'm not looking for anybody to mentor, but if you did want to be mentored by somebody like me, you have to think about the things that I want and I need and I'm looking for. And definitely I want to help people, but it can't always be for free. So. Make sure that you, whenever you're asking somebody for a mentorship, that it is in good faith and goodwill. Um, also, yeah, I got a mentorship just by being friendly with somebody on my team. As he was leaving, I got to work on the project after he left. And then I understood how talented this dude was. And I just said, I just told him, I was like, hey man, can I have 30 minutes of your time every month? I'm just going to talk about what's going on in my career and you just give me feedback. And he said, yes, that's another thing, right? Like I could, I didn't say like, Hey, every week I want you to be ready for me to hold a space for me. Uh, I just said 30 minutes every month. It's a small ask out of his time. And it does benefit us both because once you mentor somebody, you get to answer all their questions. You get to see the game from a different vantage point. Teaching is an important part of growth. So find a mentor, be a mentor, great things. So number four, master the art of applying to jobs. This is so critical. I think I have wasted so much energy in this game. I have filled a lot of interviews with all of the companies you can think of. And I didn't, sometimes I didn't tell the recruiter, hey, can we connect on LinkedIn? I want to apply there again in a year as my skills develop. And I don't think you guys know how underrated that is, right? Like. Let's say I'm in a situation right now where I want to leave my job. I can skip the lines because I have a contact with somebody. I was nice to that person. I, I, you know, like some people even send out messages like happy Christmas. I hope you're having a good time. And so it's things like that. Establishing a relationship with, uh, with a recruiter can be beneficial. Recruiters want you to win. When you win, when a, or you win, um, if you get the job, the recruiter gets paid for you getting the job. So they want to see you win. You have to be vocal. You have to have provide that relationship. And so, yeah. Also, what if you don't have the industry recruiters? Where do you go get them? How, you know, if you're new in the industry, what are you looking for? Go to career fairs. Go to career fairs. I've seen people get jobs at Twitch making the same, you know, great money. Right, $100,000 salary, great company, free food. 
just because they went to a career fair. You know, in my song, I understand, like, I didn't go to career fairs when I was in college, right? Because I was like, man, this is a lot of effort. I don't know if it's going to be worth it. That stuff might have saved me years and made me hundreds of thousands of dollars in a year if I would have just went to the career fair, right? Why cold approach, right? If you don't have anybody in the, any contacts in the industry, you have to cold approach. You have to basically walk up to women and uh, try to get their phone number on the street. And if you know, then you know, but that can be really challenging. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people make friends and they get girlfriends just because they are connected in different social circles. So that it doesn't have to be a stranger just coming off the street. And so, um, Master the Art, go to Career Fairs. I'm going to the Black is Tech Conference. I don't know if it's, there's a video up there. It hasn't happened yet. It'll probably happen in a month. But um, really looking forward to it. I'll let you guys know what happens. Um, but yeah, that's an important trait when you are looking for jobs is having a network. Like you guys probably will never understand, you know, how many people get jobs because they knew somebody on the inside. You would think that at Google or at um, your favorite company that everybody in there has gotten through by doing these rigorous tests, but there are anomalies. There are easier test situations where they don't ask the, the brouhaha questions. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you are utilizing your network. I, I definitely like anytime I apply to a job, right? I know I got a network from Cornell. I got a network from Fisk and all the jobs I went to. I say, hey, I see you're working here. Can you give me a referral link? And so that's a way you got to be shameless about it. And like people want to help you. People get referral bonuses when you help. So utilize your network, go to career fairs, um, it'll make the process that much easier. And even people at my level, right? I have Twitch, I have Google. Uh, I've been in the industry for a very long time. And still, still I will get ignored by companies like Netflix or Discord. But I guarantee one thing, if I did have somebody in the inside, it wouldn't be like that. Look at this guy, this is a, this is a constant creator. His name is Primogen. And he talks about how he knew a technology. He met somebody at Netflix. They gave him a shot and he got it. And it's like, now that dude is probably a millionaire. Um, and he didn't do half as much stuff as I did. So, um, yeah, <laughs> life is a journey. And number five, um, always continue to learn and grow. Like, I can't tell you guys how much things change in my industry. Like if you would have looked back four years, nobody would have been talking about using AI to be a programmer. But I have, I don't have to, I use prompts daily just to see how code would look. You know, it's not good enough to replace my job, but it is a great starting point. If you are not using AI to write code, if you are not asking questions, you are behind, you are under a rock, you are slow. This is the fastest way to get some answers today. It's only gonna grow and get better as the future goes. So uh, another good thing, if you're into learning new programming languages, I would learn Rust. Um, it's gonna be around for a very long time, very hard learning curve, but it's definitely, uh, you know, Rust, Elixir, some languages, if you learn them, you make more money just because the community is looking for more developers like that. And so these are my five key tips on how to be as productive as possible as a software engineer, clean your room, practice interviewing questions from leak code, whatever. Um, small tip, invest in your education, find mentors, be a mentor, give back to the community, master the art of applying to the jobs and always continue to learn. If you do these things, you are going to have a great career regardless of 
AI, right? Because you'll be able to use the AI, you'll be able to have the community, you know, you'll be able to get the jobs. So that is my take on how to be as productive as possible as a software engineer.